Hello, welcome to Youth Open Shop Live. My name is Ryan, I'm here with JP and Kirsty, and we're here at the Ogden City Bicycle Collective, or the Ogden Bicycle Collective. And we're here to answer your questions and help you learn more about bikes. So this is a weekly live stream we do every Tuesday, 5 p.m. And if you wanna join us, if you wanna ask your questions live, you can go to the Zoom webinar. And if you're watching us on YouTube, that's linked down below in the description. If uh, if you are watching this after the fact, you can always ask your questions. We've got links down below there as well. The, you can ask your question on the Google form and we'll answer it in the, either on the stream itself or at the Q&A at the end of the stream. You can also uh, sign up for our newsletter, get all the updates and all that stuff ready to go. And you can, if you have pictures of bikes and your bike problems that you wanna show us, you can always send them to my email, ryan at bicyclecollective.org. And yeah, so if you want to, this, this whole stream, the whole purpose is to hear, to answer your questions and to help you fix your bike problems at home. So what we're going to be doing today is really important. We're going to be going over how to adjust the brake cables and the brake cable tension. But before we do, we've got some important safety rules to go over. First, we go over these in a lot more detail in previous episodes. So check those out. Those are on our YouTube channel. But in the meantime, important ones, we have internet safety. First up, be excellent to each other. Always treat each other well. Always guard your privacy when you're on the internet. And if you're gonna submit your bike photos, do it against a plain background. Finally, if you're under the age of 18, always ask for permission before you post. Which, those are the safe internet safety. Now for the regular work safety rules. Now, if you're use, working on a bike, use the right tool for the job. Today, we're going to be using Allen wrenches and then some cable cutters. And we'll go over more about what's the right tool and the wrong tool when we get in the work portion. Also, always ask, always ask for help if you need it. If you need help holding something or using a tool. And always keep your safety and the safety of those around you like first priority, right? Don't, don't accidentally hurt yourself or someone else when you're trying to have fun riding your bike. All right, so let's get into it. So. This bike, last week, we went over, and we changed the brake pads, and we put actually these awesome pink calipers on the front of our purple Pacific chromium awesome mountain bike. So what we've got going on is we've got the, we've got the brake pads on, but now we need to hook, up, hook them up to the actual brake levers, because they're not very good if you can't use them. That's, a, that's a, just a rule for braking. Not good if you can't use them. So what we're going to do is I've got, oops, sorry, some fun in the background, but we've also got, so we've got a cable here and we've got what's in the cable housing and that connects to the brake lever. Now this is interesting because the brake lever, as you pull it, you can see, maybe hopefully you can see those black marks. But as you pull the brake lever, it goes down and pulls the cable into it. And as that pulls, it, sque it squeezes the brake lever together and the pads against the rim. So that's what the lever does. Now there's another important part of a brake lever, and this is called the barrel adjuster. And what happens is, let me hold it closely. You see the black mark slightly above the silver, but if I unscrew it, it'll slightly tighten it. So that's if, say, you're riding your bike and you are, uh, you're wearing down the pads, the pads are getting thinner. Remember last week we went over, or maybe we didn't last week. I don't remember. Maybe I should watch last week's video on our YouTube channel. No, the point is if, uh, hopefully we covered it last week, but the brake pads, if they're worn down too flat and too low, there's usually a little marking that says wear line. And if they're worn down all the way, then they're not good anymore and you need to replace them. But as you wear them down, sometimes you need to tighten the cable just a little bit. And you do that 
by unscrewing the barrel adjuster. And what that'll do is it'll make the cable just slightly tighter. All right, cool. There we go. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. Now, that's the cable adjust, that's the barrel adjuster, it makes the cable just slightly tighter. So that way you can adjust if you need to, if your brake pads are slightly worn. And this one's actually cool because it's got a barrel adjuster on the brake itself, on the caliper. So, excellent. Now let's go over how to, now this cable was a little old, little worn, doesn't, doesn't go very smoothly. Well, this one actually isn't too bad, but sometimes you'll know when you need, there's a couple reasons why you'd need to replace your brake cables. First one is it's really frayed at the end. And here, let me, this one isn't frayed, but let me show you what an example would look like. And it's just all over the place. And if you poke, if it pokes you, sometimes you can get slivers from the metal cables and that is not fun. So if that's, if that's the case, or if it's like got breaks in the cable and part of it is just kind of broken off and peeling off, you need to replace it then. If you have uh, cables that when you pull the lever, they just don't want to move, then that's a time when you need to replace a brake cable. This one, we're just going to replace it because it's old and because I want to show you guys how to replace it. Now, the brake lever, if this one I have pointed down just to kind of illustrate so you can see it better, but the way you adjust it, if you need to adjust it, is you loosen a little uh, bolt that's on here, that's on the handle. Sometimes it's on top, sometimes it's on the back, on the bottom. You just loosen that and then you can swivel it. You don't need to take it all the way out. But, and to show you guys what I'm doing, let's go over how to remove the cable. Now, hopefully you can see it. There's a slot right here. And cool, fun fact, there's also a slot in the barrel adjuster itself. And in this little nut that's on the barrel adjuster, it's called the lock nut. It locks it into place. And if we align all of those little channels there, we can just slide the cable right out. That's like, it's like some secret Indiana Jones temple stuff right there. That's awesome. Anyway, so we've got the cable, we got the, and what's in the, what the cable is in, this is called cable housing. Now it's stiff metal tube covered in plastic. Sometimes it's a metal tube. Sometimes it's like a long ribbon of metal that's wound up and then covered in plastic. Sometimes it's a bunch of wires that run through. And we're actually gonna go through, we pull the, oh my, cable's really in there. We're gonna go through how to replace this as well. So there's a couple reasons you wanna replace it. Here you've got an old piece. As you can tell, it's all bent. Now, the point of this is that the cable can slide smoothly through it, but it can't slide smoothly through a sharp angle like this. Another reason you'd need to replace it is if the end, if the metal cap came off and it started, and this started just to break apart. If it's the cable, sometimes it'll just go like flower out. Or if it's this one is actually a ribbon of metal wound up, that'll start peel, unpeeling. And then the cable will slowly bend it and that's not good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this black one with this awesome piece of white one. I'm just gonna make this bike all sorts of cool fashionable stuff. Now, right now it's too long. Now let's say you find a bike and you don't have any cables or housing on the bike. What you can do, uh, you don't wanna use too much because then it just gets unwieldy and it can be all over and that could be dangerous or just not good. It could cause bends and then your cable wouldn't go well. So what we're gonna do is we're, what you do is you'd kind of put it, put one end in. I'm gonna actually put it underneath this other one and put the other end and see, so you don't want it too short because then that'll cause a bend. So we don't want it too long, not too short. We want it just right. So something like there is what I guess. Let's see what the old one was. I wasn't too, I was about an inch shorter than what the old one was. 
So we'll just go ahead and put, so the old one was like this. That's not too bad. All right, so let's go ahead and cut the new one to the length that the old one was. All right, so right there. I'm gonna get my cutters. Now, we've got special cable cutters right here. And you can use, uh, and these are great because they cut the cable and then they don't leave any space in between. If you don't have these, you can use these. These are side cutters and they're the, they're the snips that you use for snipping wires and cables and things like that. These aren't great because sometimes it'll mash the cable or the cable housing and it'll pinch it and then you have to open it up again. And I'll show you, I'll demonstrate that in a second. But something you don't want to use is you don't want to use electrical cable, electrical wire cutters, because these often are only meant for copper. And copper is a lot softer than the steel that is in uh, brake cables. These are often made of hardened steel. So that way they don't stretch, they don't, they don't uh, break. So you don't want to break your nice uh, uh, cable cutters, your electrical cable cutters and wire strippers by using them on the wrong thing. So you can use these, but we're gonna use uh, these uh, ones designed specifically for cables. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it. Right, there you go. All right, so now you probably can't see this on camera, but it's pinched it a little bit at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little poker here, a little skewer. You can also use a nail or I guess a really thick needle, but you're gonna have trouble finding one that thick, but usually a nail is a really good idea, just a thin nail. So you can poke it inside there and open up that space. So that way our new cable can slide in, slide through it easily without getting pinched. All right, so now, we also are gonna put ferrules on the end. These ones here, they just slide onto the end and, and those will protect it from fraying out or becoming uh, bent or stuff like that. So that's what that does. And we're actually, I'm actually gonna get a piece, pair of pliers and pinch it on there just a little bit. So that way it doesn't, it's, it doesn't slide off as easily. All right, that should be good. All right, so now let me go ahead and put this in here and put the other side. Oh, the other side needs a ferrule as well. I dropped it, which is totally unlike me to drop things. Watch the streams, one moment. Okay. I got one. All right, I'm gonna put the other ferrule on the other side. Now, this brings up a good point because I accidentally grabbed a shift housing. Now there's two kinds of cables on a bike, brake cables and shifter cables. It's for when you wanna shift gears. And shifter cables are thinner. And so the shift housing has a thinner hole in the center. So let me, so, and usually it's actually a thinner housing as well. There we go. All right, and this one's actually plastic. Sometimes they're plastic, sometimes they're metal. Either is good, just so long as it doesn't break easily. All right, so I've put the cable I've put the housing together. Now let's get that new cable up and running. I've got my cable here coiled up. You can buy these uh, at different bike shops. Don't know if Walmart sells them, but I know you can get them online. And this is just a brake cable. There's three different kinds of brake cable. We're using mountain, oh no, there's two kinds. And then there's the super old kind. But the two modern kinds are mountain brakes, which are the most common and road brakes, which are for road bikes and other uh, sometimes older bikes out of Europe and other countries will use uh, the other kind as well. But this one 
uses the little barrel at the end, the little cylinder. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to slide the cable, oops, see my shaky hands, slide the cable in one end and it comes out the other. We're just gonna pull it all the way through and then we're gonna line up those slots again in the thing, put, and different brake levers will have a different way of connecting it. Sometimes it'll have a little thing that swings out that you slot it into. But anyway, we slot it in and then we just pull it, put it down into it. And then we tighten the, the barrel adjuster just a little bit. And then boom, there we go. All right, so now we've got the fun job of adjusting the cable tension. Now, a lot of people are intimidated by this. I was, trust me but with a little practice or just by even doing it, it's actually pretty, it's not too bad. And do we have any, did I miss any questions, Kirsty? Okay, cool. If you have any questions, just put them in the Zoom webinar or, or in the form, in the link below, yos, the tiny.cc slash yos dash l question. You can ask your question, we'll answer them on the stream. All right. Just want to make sure I didn't miss any. All right. So what we're going to do is we need to tighten this cable. Now we don't want it too tight because then the wheel won't spin. We don't want it too loose because then if you press the brake lever, well, right now it's not even attached, but if you press the brake lever, then it won't, uh, then it won't close the brakes all the way. So what happens here is there's a little slot on the inside of this screw here. And what we do is we put the cable through the slot and then we tighten the nut on the back side here. Let me see if I can turn the bike. There, like that. Oops, dropped it a bit. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the nut on the back side. Now, we wanna make sure that it's not too tight, it's not too loose. Okay, here's a question. This is from Anonymous. It says, my brake lever is really hard to pull. Why is that? Now, there's a lot of reasons why that could be. Usually it's because there's a bend somewhere in their wire, or sometimes it's because, uh, it's, there's a lot of corrosion and gunk build up on the wire itself, and that can cause it to uh, uh, get stuck inside there. Usually what you wanna do is, so let's say this one weren't squeezing all the way. What we'd wanna do is we'd wanna detach it from where it connects to the brake itself, and then we'd keep trying to pull the lever. We'd detach it from here, and sometimes bikes will have a segment of housing and then a space where there is no housing and then there'll be another segment of housing. And what you do then is you take off one segment of housing and then you try it again, take off the last one and then you'd see if it was just a brake lever. So you kind of go up the river as it were. You go up the cable to see where the problem is. And uh, a lot of times that's just solved by replacing the brake cable and then also replacing the housing as well. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we've actually, now when you do your brakes, you want them as tight as you can where they're not rubbing. And I think I actually got it pretty close here. It is rubbing just the tiniest bit though. So the way we'd fix that is we'd actually screw in the barrel adjuster. Because as you screw it in, it makes the cable just a little bit less tight. Unscrewing it makes the cable tighter. Screwing it in makes it looser. So we've loosened up the cable just a little bit. And, oops, sorry, the stand I'm using kind of rubs the tire a bit. All right. Now, honestly, I think that's probably good. Now, 
you might, this is a good point where you might need to ask for help, have someone pull, hold it still for you. Now, when you're holding it still, make sure that you don't accidentally let the housing pop out of where it's supposed to go, or else then you'll have a little bit of trouble when you go to break and the cable housing popped out. And yeah, all right, so that's the cable, we've put it on. Now we're actually gonna cut the cable. Again, don't use electric cable cutters. You, you can use side cutters, little wire cutters here. We're gonna be using these specific cable cutters. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cut, let me go at it from this side. We're gonna cut the cable right here just like an inch or two down. We don't want it too long because then it'll just be dangling there and you don't want it too short because then if you need to adjust it after the fact, let's say you get new brake pads and you need to get make the cable looser because the brake pads are much bigger than they used to be. You want to have like an inch or two afterwards. Cut it there. And then you can recycle this stuff. This is really great. You can, you can make a crafts out of it. I've, I've done a couple crafts using brake cables, they're very strong. As a matter of fact, I have a, mon a little monitor that's being held up right now by a brake cable. They're very strong. Anyway, so, uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna crimp something on the end there because we don't want this to get frayed and to peel out and poke us again, like this, one, this old one did. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on what JP likes to refer to as a Benny. Benny, where'd you go? Here you are, Benny. Boom, it's just a little cap that goes on the end of the cable. I just learned this, for, this term today actually from JP. I was like, JP, what do you call these things? And he's like, oh, I always call them Bennies. And I was like, Bennies, like Benny and the Jets. He said, oh, I'd never heard that. He was like, that's why I'm here, Ryan. Tell you things you'd never heard of before. So I'm just gonna go ahead Oops, and I need to tighten this. You can just use a pair of pliers. I'm using these uh, locking pliers. Except I don't think these locking pliers are gonna work. I'll use the, end, the very end of these, have a little pinching mechanism on them. And then you just pinch it on there so it doesn't come off again. And there you go, there you have it. That's all there is for it to that. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and put them in the comments. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and recap this before we go into the big Q&A. But yeah, excellent. So uh, if you like this, you guys should be sure to like and subscribe, follow us on uh, Instagram, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and join us next time. Ask a question in the question form or a live on the Zoom call. We'll go over that. All right, so and here's actually a good question uh, before we wrap up with the brake levers. So Angus, he says, how do I know where to position my brake levers? That's a, actually a really good question. Now, because sometimes you, now the first rule is you don't want them to be different. You don't want this one way up and this one way down because then you're riding all funky. So first, the first rule I like to have is make them be level. Second rule is where do you feel most comfortable? Some people like to ride their bikes like this, like all hunched over it. Some people like to ride their bikes really relaxed. So you can just find the position you like best. And then you tighten them into place. And that's about level. Honestly, from there, it's all personal preference. So if you have a preference that you like and you like them one way and your friends like them another, that's okay but you wanna make sure that they're in a place where you can easily press them in an emergency. All right, so to recap, what did we do? We showed how pulling the cable, pulling the lever tightens the cable and that compresses the brakes and loosening the barrel adjuster just tightens the cable just a little bit. If you unscrew the barrel adjuster, it'll tighten the cable just that little bit. And if, uh, and if you wanna remove it, there's usually a very easy and quick way to do it. Some bikes, it's a little bit harder. Always look and ask for help if you need to. So uh, we pulled the cable out, we, put the, we cut some new housing, and we put the new cable in, cut it to length, 
and put a little Benny on the end. So if you need, uh, if you need to change your brake cables at home, go ahead and do so. And you'll have a lot better time riding your bike if you know you can stop when you're done, especially if you're going downhill. All right, so uh, that's it for the work. Uh, that's what we did this week. Tune in the next week. We'll probably do something cool. I think this bike, maybe we'll even get into shifting because this bike has gears, but we'll see what we go. Uh, stay tuned. We'll let you know. You can always sign up for our newsletter. Keep uh, Stay posted of any changes that we do. That's tiny.cc slash BC newsletter you can sign up for. It's in the description down below. And yeah, so let's see. Any off-topic questions we have this week? Ah, brilliant. All right, so my chain keeps skipping. Do I need a new one? Do I need new gears? And this, this is actually a really important topic because even people who've ridden their bikes for years and years I have this question and uh, there's always a bunch of different answers. Obviously, uh, uh, sometimes you do need new chain if it's like falling apart, but the oddly enough, it also, the question comes up, uh, I mean, the question is often answered by, can you, uh, do I need new chain is often, can you adjust the cable tensioning just a little bit? So by adjusting the barrel adjusters, it'll adjust whether the cable is tighter or looser. And sometimes that'll be the difference between like, oh, my, my chain keeps skipping between one gear and the other, and it's being weird. Often if you adjust the barrel adjusters, so if, it's, if you're in gear number two and it keeps wanting to go up to gear number one, usually that means that you need to loosen, so screw in the barrel adjuster just a little bit. If you're in gear number six and it keeps wanting to go down, I mean, yeah, go down to gear number five, or is it the other way around? If it's in gear number five, no, it's at gear number six and it wants to go up to gear number five, that means that the cable is too tight or too loose and you need to unscrew the barrel adjuster to make the cable just a tiny bit tighter. And that's just a lot of experimentation. Like, a, like it's kind of like remembering lefty, loosey, righty, tidy for unscrewing a screw. Sometimes you just have to get out there and practice. So flip your, rear, flip your bike upside down and pedal it and shift gears and adjust the barrel adjuster a little by a little bit by a little bit until you get it right. And that's, off, that's the way I learned how to do it. And that's kind of the reason why it's hard for me to explain it sometimes because I love doing it. So I'll keep trying to learn how better how to explain it. But anyway, so uh, I think that's all for today's Q&A. Excellent, all right. So yeah, if you guys wanna join us, uh, you can watch these after the fact. You can join us by watching these on YouTube and posting your question after, or you can, and, you can join us on the Zoom webinar Tuesdays at five. So we'll see you guys next week. You guys go out, get, ride your bike, be safe, and have a great day.